<laughs> I know I left the channel to die, but uh, you didn't actually think this was me, did you? Well, uh, this is actually Josh. It's, it's not me, but I guess Josh here didn't get the memo that Halloween's over, did he? But just because Halloween's over doesn't mean the spook is. So let's jump right into the new spook. Okay, <laughs> that was weird, but I am glad to be back as a human being. You ever been a bat? What's that? No? You've never been a bat before? Yeah, I don't blame you. Those things are disgusting and carry around a bunch of diseases. I wouldn't be surprised if one day they could carry around the modern day plague. Yeah, but uh, that would never happen. <laughs> Not in 2020, you know, that wouldn't happen. But speaking of things that would never happen, how about that Halloween? Yeah, yeah. okay, it's, it's, it is kind of tragic. And I know you can't go see Granny and go get some candy, but it's okay. Daddy's here with some sugar. And some good games, some very scary games. Wait a second, did I say bad games? <laughs> oh no, not bad games. Although they may be very scary, they even the spirit. But I want to take it back to something very nostalgic. Uh, nostalgic to no one really, but nostalgic nonetheless. I'm talking about the very first game series that we ever reviewed here on the channel. For better or for worse, really. That's right, Clock Tower. <laughs> Been a while, buddy. It's always good to see the face of commercial failure yet again with human entertainment. Life really hasn't been the same since you guys went bankrupt. <laughs> and I mean, hey, human entertainment? It's only human to make mistakes. I guess it's time to see exactly what we just got ourselves into. What the f***? Well, we're uh, only 31 seconds into this game, and <laughs> I think it's safe to say I better get something strong. Well, hopefully this does the trick. This will help me deal with the pain. The game just started, and on frame one, we've already been introduced to Jabba the Hutt's fetus cousin, one-eyed pile of sh No wonder he went up in flames so easy. I mean, who could blame him? He is made out of natural gas. And who had the time to put these candles on the side of this cliff here? And more importantly, who lit these things? And how are they still going? Was it him? The Cyclops Pyromaniac Dookie the Hutt here, just living in a stream with his aroma scented candles? Clearly wasn't enough to mask the smell since his lady friend here still dropped Hiroshima on his ass. And at all costs, man, you gotta avoid making eye contact with it. Yep, that's right, eye contact, he's only got one. Why does looking back at the explosion just trigger a flashback of a woman just looking menacingly in a fire? Yep. Never expected this, but I'll take back extra chromosome Chab of the Hutt over Fire Karen over here. The evil... Wait a second, the game's really not gonna acknowledge the whole, um, I don't know, the sleep paralysis demon in the corner of my room? If it was a very well candlelit cave sewer thing with a monster that just got blown up from a creeper from Smash Brothers? You know that thing? You know that guy? You know that definitely not human and definitely not entertainment? You know that thing? No, that's fine. I'll just pretend not to remember all that stuff and we'll just casually go into this new conversation about murder. Uh, uh, I'm not really sure if this is an artistic take or anything, but why is everyone talking over the narrator like he lost his job halfway through the first scene? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. You, you gotta be kidding me right now. Giant pair of scissors. I guess they really have ran out of every single original idea in Hollywood, huh? Hell of terror stretches across Europe. Norway to England. Hey, uh, voice actor of uh, Clock Tower here, and uh, just wondering if you could uh, speak a little quicker. I know, <laughs> I know, I definitely know they're not paying you well, but if you could just speak it like at least to the speed of the text, that would be awesome. You know, it would make the game a lot more enjoyable. The giant scissors once again search for prey. Oi, would you look over there in the thick of the bush? That's a good old scissor right there. Holy, looking for some prey. There it is, the Barrow's Mansion. We have to go there and look around, but we'll never solve the mystery of scissor now. Sorry, what was that? Come again? Yeah, I can barely even hear you over this bootleg Halloween music. After the grand opening of Popeye, Chef reused his giant scissor ability to bring havoc to all the fast food world. So someone really just looked at the giant scissors they used for grand openings and said, you know what? They're missing out on the full potential of those. You know, you'd really just take them and you just go, ah, ah, ah. Scissorman. Really? That's it? 
Imagine your whole identity revolving around one thing if you're carrying it around. Actually, on second thought, I guess if it's 60 times larger than life scissors, you kinda do get a pass, but uh, you might as well just call me Chicken Neck Nugget Man at this point. But everyone asks, where's Scissorman? But no one asks how is Scissorman, huh? One after another. <gasps> Boom, just like that. F scissor Kool-Aid Man. Oh yeah! Beer is fascinating. No drugs were taken in the making of this game. Oh boy, that was the only the intro to the game. The game hasn't even begun. What on earth are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Come on, Professor Burton, stop it. Don't do the hypnosis that strong on her. She may remember the murders. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research. Yeah, Helen, actually, fuck that kid. Murder is fascinating. Oh, uh... Don't mind her, she's just reliving multiple murders that she nearly escaped. In the not-so-crazy turn of events, the professor has a serious scissorman fetish. He has the giant replica scissors and the whole murder being fascinating thing going for him. I can just taste the cheesy horror game death coming for this guy. Yeah, very nice touch, having all the suspense end right before the description does. Yeah! Michael Myers left his face over there. I gotta check that shit out. I'll be back. Oh, it's just a cheap ripoff of Scissorman's face. <laughs> People do buy stupid stuff. Huh. You don't say. People do buy stupid stuff, huh? After a short run-in with local reporters, we find out another survivor of the Clock Tower murders is here for us to abuse. <clears throat> to hell. Theater is fascinating. And, as we're about to have something happen for once in this game, it cuts to a save screen. All right. He's gonna, he's gonna do a quick save here, and then, uh, and get back to the interesting stuff. Oh! Entirely different scene, and we're not even the same character anymore. And strangely enough, we get to choose where to go in the entire city now. And this map is looking oddly familiar, almost like it's completely ripped from Sim City. Yeah, I'll just go back to that lab, you know, where the guy tries to remind me of the memories. Yeah, that one right there. Right beside the hurricane and the, the mutant monster, it looks like Godzilla. So after clicking around Sim City, we find out that the boy survivor is in the hotel and our guardian is not going to be home for dinner. Oh, that's pretty convenient. Some guardian she is. <laughs> But the reporter is at our house and wants to go out for an interview date. Might as well get paid and get laid. Ah, that's nice. Triggering our first 2D level. Where Jennifer just randomly says she's being followed when there is not a single person in sight. See what you did, Professor? She's being chased by memories of a murder that she was reminded of. By you, man. She then sprints towards this random building where a security guard is there to save her from the invisible person. Help! Someone is following me! Ah, so safe. You know, security guards never die. Oh my god! Giant scissors! Nope! This is totally one of my past memories coming back to haunt me. We have to hide from the scissor hunchback in these boxes that I guess that will do. He's not like he clearly watched us go into this room and this the only thing in here. And somehow he just doesn't find us. It's almost like it's a video game or something. There are some tools here, nothing too useful. I mean, actually, I guess that's completely subjective. Buffy over here likes to use giant scissors. I guess these oil cans will do. Actually, time to think of it. She was an explosion expert expert at the beginning. You know what they say, <laughs> never bring scissors to a TNT fight, am I right? We quickly find other humans to help us, but no, Jennifer has other objectives. Oh look, a key! Never mind security guard, that's clearly right there. I learned from the murders, you know, he probably has every single key on him as well, so you know, it's fine, you just find that one key. He'd be far more helpful if you ask me, but... <laughs> oh my god, never mind, he's no use, he's dead! Well... This ain't gonna cut it. It's, it's not strong enough. Be something like this. Well, after seeing that, the only logical thing to do here is to go on top of the building and... Um, uh, well, uh... Um... Don't do it, Jennifer! Seriously, we can find another way! And at the top of the building, there's a ladder. Yeah, that's right. Okay, it's safe. Hurry up! Yeah, Jennifer, you might want to hurry it up. You know, your, your death is kind of on the line. You remember the, you get the guy with the scissors? <laughs> the guy with the snip snip? No, like, seriously, you really gotta hurry it up. Like, any moment now, he could just snip, snip the ladder and then you, whoo, you got You did. Capiche. Guy, Wiley Coyote, you know, he falls off the cliff, you're not surviving that. Okay, you're, you're seriously on your own at this one. You wanna take that long to walk on a ladder? 
Oh, well, you looked at it. You made it to the bottom. And that's the end of chapter one. We're one step closer to the end. After the tragic events she had to go through, she goes to her therapist, and all he cares about is that he didn't solve the last mystery, and that the new one is absolute bullshit that another mass murder could possibly happen. It seems that a missing statue here is also a suspicious factor here. I mean, I don't know, kind of sounds painfully familiar and obvious enough. Lover boy over here, who we did stand up on the date to see Scissorman instead, says that he would cover the statue for us. And uh, this scene couldn't get more awkward. This There is literally no audio in this scenes until just like this creepy repeated four note loop just continuously happens. And then out of absolutely nowhere, Nolan. What? He can talk? You, you, you know, you could have made things a lot easier. You know, you could have just, you could have, you could have just voice acted this whole scene, considering the fact there was a lot of text and I can't read. Kind of odd. How only like one percent of this game seems to be actually voice acted. Yes, what wonderful times they were, except for. <laughs> No, it can't be. Not this entirely new character that just started voice acting underneath the chandelier. Almost as if it was, I don't know, if it was obvious. Also, I know there should be a traumatic scene, but what the f*** is that shadow? I mean, what is this? Did they even try? It looks like it's still in development. You, you can still see every single polygon. You know, I know game developer, but maybe next time, you know, you cut some of those professionally voice acted scenes out and then you'll be able to afford some better polygons you know get some better shadows you know keep your players a little bit more immersed in this piece of and after running upstairs well, what i was expected to be a good old hide underneath the bed technique you see in many many horror movies and games i was not prepared for this Yeah, hey, Nolan, you, you, you can't be serious. You took off the world's smallest bedsheet to stop the monster with scissors. Didn't you think maybe you should put the cover at least over his head? No? You didn't think about that? You, you really just, uh, you just put it on his hunch like a cape. Yeah, you know, this ain't Super Mario World, Nolan! But hey, it works, so what do I know? Also, bonus points for changing the music as if we single-handedly defeated the threat with one bedsheet. So much so, you could actually walk right back into the same room directly after it happens. And Scissor Man is gone. He's already decomposed right there in the room. But there is a statue here. Soap can be used to blind someone. Oh, so that's what soap's for. <laughs> Wait, what? What? What What are you- are you kidding me? What am I supposed to do here? There seems to be a lot going on. First off, it seems we have found the clock tower location by looking at a mask. <laughs> I think the map was over there, big guy. <laughs> no wonder you get stood up on that day for the scissorman over there. And, uh, you are getting attacked by a chair, a painting, in the mask. And they expect me not to attack the mask? It's a uh, very interesting choice there. That is actually what started this whole thing, isn't that? Directly after this, the correct thing to do is literally blind the dog with the laundry powder. So, what's the only logical thing to do after being attacked by a mask, a chair, a painting, and blinding a dog? Well, the only logical thing to do, in my opinion, would be go to England to the Barrow's Castle and stop Scissorman at the source. Because Scissorman would never go all the way to England, you know? It's, 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 all ra it's always rainy there, it's a little gloomy, you know? Scissorman's not gonna, he's gonna get rusted up. Funny enough, Nolan says he was considered the murderer from the investigator. Imagine how that conversation went. I'm serious, I had nothing to do with that murder of that man whom I was alone with in his house. But I did, however, blind his dog. We couldn't go to England without telling the painfully obvious scissorman where we are also going. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious. I mean, come on, this kid doesn't turn out to be scissorman. I will literally donate $100 to charity. They really broke the bank here with this world map and dotted line sequence. Are you guys serious? You guys didn't notice literally everyone missing? It's just you two? I mean, Helen seems kind of sus to me right now. Everyone vote Helen. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait a second. What did he just walk into? Is this what it means to get scissor? Don't be afraid, Jennifer. It's me, Harris. Harris? 
poor girl. Don't worry. I'll help you now. Should have known, Scoop. He was dressed up as a bad guy. He's a good old mask trick. He told me that if I kidnap you, he will give you to me. He told me to dress up like Scissorman and kill people. Wait, what? So he dressed up as Mr. Scissorman and murdered innocent people to get Jennifer. Don't know if you know how love works, Harris. I'm any closer. <gasps> Scissorman on Scissorman action directly after. And you know the real one fully murdered Harris here. After hiding behind an empty rack of jackets and dropping it on Mr. Scissorman here, we are able to escape his long scissory grips just so we can re-enter the same room he chased us from to get a stair key. You know, I, I find it really interesting. He just poofs. He just teleports the second he's defeated. You know what they say? The killer always returns to the scene, I guess. We then go to this creepy cathedral where we rip a goddamn cement panel off the wall and f God damn it, Jennifer! If you had that strength the whole time, you know you could've just f***ing ripped Scissorman in half. Inspector Gott! Thank heaven, you're all right. Hmm, I don't know about this, Jennifer. Large puddle of blood, wounds on his face. I don't know, is he is he dead? Is he clear? Is, is, is it too early to say that you're happy that he's all right? I don't know, the fact that you're actually having to hold him up to talk to him too is, uh, it's a little worrisome. But no stress, we found a candle on the floor. One candle, one staircase key, one cement panel, one foreign note. Huh, he's a few ingredients away from making the Powerpuff Girls. I don't know. Yeah, the, the staircase over there seems to be clearly going up, but this is Clock Tower ever, so maybe, I don't know, you'll just come out of a fucking fireplace or something. Oh wow, this, this this castle seems to have the exact same layout as Conquer's Bad Fur Day, except one of them is actually a good game. And it's not this one. Shortly after, we find yet another key, but this time to the library, and add it to our inventory. From, get this, following a map into the hole in the wall and finding a book under the covers of a bed that happens to be a copper cover book. Yep, clearly no drugs used in the making of this game. I don't f***ing get it. We then find the professor himself to get this beautifully act voice dialogue. It's you, Jennifer. Professor Barton? You serious? That's all? A scissorman out on the loose and you've seen two people die in the castle and yo, what up professor? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm talking to him again. That can't be it. Hey, yo, professor, I have 50 pounds of items on me. So, I don't, I don't know, look at one of them maybe? You, I don't want to carry it anymore, you maybe just tell me what the f it does? I found something I would like you to look at. What does this say? Nha a sh- What does it mean? I don't know. Huh, very intriguing. But you know what? Get the f*** up! People are dying out there! Cool talk, I, I, I guess murder is fascinating, am I right? I guess I'll just find the door as you stare at this f***ing fountain. After entering the kitchen area and jamming a pot on the scissorman's head, I know what to do. After narrowly escaping, you just gotta return to the scene. After collecting too many more keys to slightly advance, finding more people to do nothing, and clicking on tombs with dead old scissormans inside. Oh look, a chest key. Oh, but sorry, I have to tie up the door closed from stopping me from opening up the chest. After being chased over a small ledge by the Man of Scissor himself, we eventually make it to the Room of Bones. Just when you thought you've seen it all and nothing could possibly be more confusing, badly voice acted, or predictable, they pull out the singing dead children. Human entertainment, you monsters. You guys named the company after human to convince people that you're human. I played your games, you're monsters, you ain't no fucking human. What was that? You saw them too? It's, it's kinda hard to miss that singing dead children over there, you, you serious? Of course I saw that shit. Maybe you'll need a light. Oh, I'm definitely gonna need a light. This is just far too much for me. Oh, wait a sec. Are you guys all off crack? Is that what's happening? Is that what's going on here? Just one long high? Is there really a scissorman? Or is it just all of our insecurities manifesting themselves into the man of scissor himself? <laughs> oh god, no, it's real. Abort mission! After finally finding a weapon and draining the fountain, Any minute now. Just about any minute now. Yep. It's uh it's gonna take a while, but 
Any minute now. I think we finally found the right place. Um, actually, on a, a second thought here. So, it was you, Edward. <laughs> I guess the secret is finally out, Jennifer. Oh no, it seems it was Edward all along. No way, who would have guessed it? But my name isn't Edward, it's Dan. Oh, would you look at that? Edward is Scissorman, but his name's actually Dan. So I didn't even have enough time to elaborate on the Edward Scissorhand joke. Isn't that beautiful? But since he is Dan and not Edward, I guess that means uh, I do have to make a charitable donation. Do -do 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 donation. As we're being chased by Scissorman himself, we put this statue on this altar over here, and I shit you not, we open up a black hole. You know what? I'm actually numb to this. I'm actually numb to the bull at this point. And we almost get sucked into this black hole if it wasn't for stabbing the scissorman. You know, karma at its finest. You know, you finally stabby stab stab everyone and then you finally get stabbed back. After being trapped underneath the castle, Nolan and Jennifer share a kiss and are finally rescued by Helen. And I don't know, she seems a little bit more interested in Helen if you ask me. Jennifer, Nolan, Helen. The end. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button so I know you guys enjoyed the video. And remember to check out my video from last year on Clock Tower. Yeah, but that one was on Clock Tower too. This one's just Clock Tower. And if you want to see actually good games, there's other more options here for you as well. I've been R9, and I hope you had yourselves a spooky time. <laughs>